Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where you will learn how to design steel connections using RAM Connections Standalone. RAM Connection Standalone is used for the designing and detailing of steel connections. It can design individual shear, moment, brace, splice, and truss connection types to a variety of different steel design codes. In this particular video, we're going to be focusing on the workflow for assigning a directly welded moment connection to a beam to column joint within RAM connection standalone. We will now turn our attention to the RAM connection standalone application, where as you can see, we have several different types of joints that have already been created. For this video, we're going to be designing a directly welded moment connection for joint number one. So let's go ahead and review this joint quickly before we get into the connection assignment. As you can see, this is a beam column flange joint and the beam framing into the column has both a shear and a moment reaction imposed upon it. Now we are preparing to assign a directly welded moment connection to this joint and this is a connection template that's able to resist the moment component of the reaction. Now, since this joint has both a moment and a shear component for the reaction, we've already gone ahead and assigned a shear connection to this joint. And as you can see, this will be just a single plate connection for this particular model. We are now ready to assign our moment connection. To do that, we will select the design tab in the ribbon toolbar, and then we'll click on the assign icon. In the connection assignment dialog, what you're going to notice is that the filters have already been appropriately selected for the joint we have active at the moment, which is a beam column flange joint. You can see that each of the connection types are organized by the types of reactions they can resist. Now we already have a shear connection assigned to this joint, so we'll go ahead and scroll down to see which moment connection types are available. Now for this particular exercise, we're particularly interested in a directly welded moment connection. And that particular connection type is only available as a smart connection. So we'll go ahead and select the smart connection option. We will find our moment connections and we're looking for the acronym DW for directly welded connection. This is basically a full penetration weld that will connect the beam top and bottom flanges to the column flange. I'll go ahead and select the connection type I want and then click on the assign button. Once I do that, we can see that the connection assignment has proceeded successfully. So we'll go ahead and click close. And as we can see in the results area that this joint now has a, both a moment and a shear connection assigned to it. In the joint selection area, we're also going to be able to see the status of the connection design. Now, in the case where I'm assigning two different connections to the same joint, I do wanna make sure that the controlling connection design results are being displayed in the joint selection area. To ensure that that is happening, go to the home tab of the ribbon, and we're going to make sure that this critical load condition icon is currently selected. Now I did take a look at this joint selection area and I did notice before assigning the directly welded moment connection that the shear connection was passing. So I can see here pretty clearly that the moment connection is what basically pushed it over the edge to a failing connection condition. Now what I want to do at this point in my workflow is review that connection design to see if there is anything I can do to get it to a passing connection situation. To edit the connection, you're going to go to the Design tab of the Ribbon Toolbar, click the Edit icon. Now we're able to edit either the shear connection or the moment connection, and you're going to edit these different connection types independently of each other. So here I'm going to select the moment connection, and this is another way to confirm that this is the connection that was currently failing. This is our controlling interaction ratio, which is 1.07. So it is overstressed, the interaction ratio is greater 
than 1.0, and it is in red, meaning that it is a failing connection design. Now once within the connection pad, I can go ahead and review the results if I'd like more information regarding the calculations. I can review the DXF and I can make some changes to the connection design. Let's start by taking a look at the results. So this is our connection report. From this report, we can go ahead and see where our connection design is currently failing. For this particular example, our bottom local flange bending and our local web yielding are both failing. Now, if I want some more information regarding the calculations, I can go up to the ribbon toolbar and click on this view formulas icon. This will show me all the equations, uh, calculations, and code references that were used to arrive at these results. So let's go ahead and close out of our report. Now I can see that my moment connection is currently overstressed and I have a couple of options here. If I was able to, I might consider changing the size of the column. That might get me to a passing connection design in this scenario. Now I might not be able to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at this box of stiffener information. As you can see, I can add transfer stiffeners and column web panel zone stiffeners um, and see if that would get me to a passing connection design. For this example, let's go ahead and take a look at transverse stiffeners. And I'm gonna assume that's the approach I wanna take instead of changing my column size. So here I can add them at the top, the bottom, or both, top and bottom flange. So let's go with both. And as we can see, anytime you make a change in the connection pad, your interaction ratio and status will be updated. Here I can see that my interaction ratio is now below 1.0, which means it did pass the code check, but it is in yellow, meaning that I'm receiving some type of warning on the connection design as it stands right now. If I want additional information regarding that warning, I can again return to the results area and the connection report will be updated considering any changes that I made. So whatever is currently in the connection pad. Here I'll go down and I could see that, yeah, all the design checks are coming out good, but I have some geometric considerations. So here you can see that the length of the transverse stiffener um, is less than the minimum recommended value. Here I can also see that the weld size is less than the minimum recommended value. So let's go ahead and close out of that and make some customizations. In addition to considering where I'm producing warnings, I may also consider that I'd like to customize this connection just for detailing purposes as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that at the same time. So here I'm gonna take a look at the depth of the stiffeners. And what I'd prefer is I'd prefer full depth stiffeners for construction purposes. In addition to that, I can also see that this stiffener is coming out or protruding past the column flange, and I'd prefer it to be shrunk down a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and modify the transverse stiffener width, again, for detailing purposes. Now, neither of those changes put me to a passing condition. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the other parameters. Now I did notice that the weld size was less than minimum recommended value. So instead of 316s, I'm gonna try a quarter inch weld. Now once I've made all those changes, I can see that my interaction ratio, again, is still less than 1.0, but now it's in green, meaning that it passed all the code checks and did not produce any warnings during the design process. So at this point, I like the changes I've made. I'm gonna go ahead and click the save icon. And this will save all my changes to this particular join. In addition to that, within the connection pad, I can take a look at the DXF drawing of this particular connection and how it would be detailed. I can export this detail to a DXF and I can even customize the layers. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and close out of the connection pad. And then in the joint selection area, I'll be able to see the information that I modified in the connection pad for this currently selected joint. And I'll be able to see the status of the connection design. Again, this is the controlling interaction ratio. So since I have two different connection templates assigned to this joint, it'll give me the higher interaction ratio of 
the cheer versus the moment connection. At this point, this concludes my process for assigning a directly welded full penetration connection to a beam column joint for the purposes of resisting the moment component of the reaction. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.